All right, what's up guys? Dr. Kyle Loveless here. Let's dive into the top five things today that you can take for psoriasis. Big question is what do I take for psoriasis? I'm gonna give you five things to start with and see if those work for you. And a lot of times that might be part of your answer uh, to getting better with psoriasis. So we're gonna dive into that. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it, do all this fun stuff you're supposed to with YouTube. Also go into the uh, information section. I got an awesome ebook for you on how to reduce inflammation, 10 things you can do to prevent it, and 10 things you can do to get rid of it uh, and, and add in back into your health. So make sure you watch, uh, read that book as well. You're gonna get a ton from that in that process as well. All right, top five. This is our top five for psoriasis, or my top five for psoriasis. This is what I would recommend if someone just called me up on the phone. They said, hey, Dr. Kyle, what do I take for psoriasis? And I would say, well, that's a loaded question, but let's start with these five things. And number one is gonna be vitamin D3. Here's why. Vitamin D3 is actually a hormone that is very important for your immune response and so important that it can actually help if you've watched some of the other videos I did on what psoriasis is. So go back before you watch this and watch the video on what is psoriasis because it, T, uh, D, vitamin D3 can actually help downregulate T helper cells, which are overactive in an autoimmune response. One of the most common things we'll see with any autoimmune response, but psoriasis specifically, is that right there, low vitamin D3 levels. Personally, I had psoriasis since I was probably four years old until about five years ago, I had it forever, right? It was just, it's, it's just I, I thought it was gonna be a part of my life forever. I did all the right things, I tried to eat right and everything else, but I always had low vitamin D3 levels. That was part of me healing from psoriasis, okay? So I personally know what that is, but it's one of the first things we do with patients. So about 15 to 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3 levels, and go ahead and find someone, and you can connect with us if you want, but uh, find someone that will test your vitamin D3 levels, right? Why not, right? It, it's not expensive, and you can tell where is it? You want it to be between 50 and 100, not 30 and 100, which is what some of the test results will say. Between 50 and 100, good vitamin D3 levels. Now, you also want to make sure that your receptors are working at absorbing that vitamin D3. Okay, so you're taking vitamin D3, you want to take K2 with that. There's supplements that have them both together. But then at the same time, you can do something called bile salt or Tudco bile salts, T-U-D-C-O bile salts that help uh, the activation or the almost the absorption of that vitamin D3 in your body so it can be used. It also acts to break down your food. One of the major issues with uh, psoriasis is not digestion, not digesting very well, gallbladder issues, things like that. So it'll help you break down the fats that you're eating so you don't get things like psoriasis. This is amazing for uh, eczema, it's amazing for acne, things like that as well, because it helps you break down the fat, supporting the liver and the gallbladder in that process. Really good stuff. So it's it's Tudco, T-U-D-C-O, um, bile salts. And you can get that, uh, you can go online and get that. Go find yourself something like, uh, I think Bio Bioecology or Body, Body Bio has one that's really good. Gero has one that's really good. But it's, it's a lot better than just ox bile, okay? Which is what a lot of times we'll give for gallbladder issues. So Tudco, um, uh, bile salts, really good. So we got D3, we got Tedco bile salts. Cod liver oil is the third one that I would say. And the reason cod liver oil specifically is it has high vitamin A and high vitamin D count, which is very good, not just for your overall health, but it's really good to help that uh, immune system. And vitamin A is really important for skin health as well. Also, the omega-3 count in there is great from your EPA DHA standpoint, which is very good for anti-inflammatory. Our cell walls are, are surrounded by fat, okay? So imagine you have this cell right here in my hand, and it's surrounded by fat, okay? It's actually connected. Those fat cells are connected by cholesterol, by the way, because cholesterol is important. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So you got this fat cell, or fat bi lipid bilayer, and it's an omega-3, omega-6 lipid bilayer. Okay, so you've heard omega threes, you've heard of omega sixes. You want about a four to one ratio of omega six to omega three in that lipid bilayer. The average American diet is about a twenty to one ratio. So in other words, the average American's inflamed all the time just because of that fat ratio that they're eating. Okay, the conventional diet. So taking things like cod liver oil can help balance out that ratio, reduce inflammation, which is why it's a supplement that so many people take for joint health and joint pain because of that inflammation or anti-inflammatory response. Okay, so we got cod liver oil. Next is gonna be albizia, 
okay? Albizia is an herb. I love this herb. It's one of those, and it's actually called the feel-good herb because it's really good at stimulating neurotransmitter activity. But albizia is really good at reducing that kind of that overactive immune system response, that histamine response, especially if you've never had a food allergy test or you're eating foods that you know you shouldn't and they're creating inflammation. Albizia, you can take that with it and kind of calm that immune response down. That takes stress off of the gut. Along with albizia, I'm gonna recommend turmeric. Okay, I'm putting these two together, so I'm actually giving you six. So turmeric's kind of the bonus. But turmeric is an anti-inflammatory uh, herb, or, or I'm sorry, root. It's a COX-2 inhibitor, just like ibuprofen is, but it doesn't have the negative side effects you're gonna get with ibuprofen. There's a lot of studies out there that actually show turmeric is more beneficial, I'm sorry, just as effective in terms of its anti-inflammatory effects, but more beneficial in terms of how well it is for your DNA restructuring, how good it is for your overall health as it's a really powerful root that you can take as well. So turmeric and albizia, kind of take those together. Final one, and so I'm really giving you six, but five sounds better. So the final one is Romania. Romania is, so R-H-E-M-A-N-I. Uh, Romania is an herb that is, it's an adaptogen, so it helps your adrenals handle stress, but it also helps downregulate that TH cell response, which a T helper cell response, which is what's so important in an autoimmune response. Any patient that comes in with autoimmunity, first thing we do is put them on Romania, and sometimes that's all they need to just help calm the system down while we work on the gut and heal it. So you notice, I didn't talk a lot about digestive herbs and things like that and supplements, because that, that really does need to get more specific. I know other people will tell you to take L-glutamine or uh, other or probiotics or things like that, but here's the problem. What if you have SIBO and you have too much bacteria? Well, I'm not gonna just recommend a probiotic. So these are things that I think everybody can take, no matter what your particular uh, reasoning is for having it. They're a good starting point. They're gonna be healthy for you. They're gonna help you break down some food and absorb food better and calm down that immune response if you have psoriasis. Because if you have psoriasis, we know you have an overactive immune response. Your next step is do some testing. Do a stool test. Evaluate what your gut looks like. Do a, um, do a food allergy test. Evaluate what your diet should be like. And follow a non-inflammatory diet. You do those things. You take those five supplements and you start implementing uh, the eating plans that I've talked about in the other videos on what foods to take out of your diet and what foods to follow. And I can promise you, you're going to get better. It's going to take time. Some people... It's like that. You take food allergies out, they get better. Some people, it takes time. So what I'm, what I'm getting at here is this is not, the last thing I wanna do, sorry, my phone there. The last thing I wanna do is say, everybody takes this, they get rid of psoriasis. I, I, it drives me crazy when doctors get on videos and they tell you that because it's so deceiving because yeah, I mean, maybe 25% of the people they told that it worked and they get their good testimonials from those people and it looks amazing. But what about the other 75% that it didn't work for? And so start with these things. I promise you they can be a part of your puzzle. They might not be the whole answer yet. So if it doesn't go away in that, with what I just told you today, your next answer is next. What else next? What else next do I need to do? And that's one of my favorite words. So use that. Say, okay, I didn't get rid of it yet, but I know I'm on the right track. What testing do I need? What doctor do I need to reach, reach out to? Okay. If you want help with us from Queen City Health Center, go down the links below. You can connect with us. It shows you how to do that. Make sure you get that non-inflammatory uh, non-inflammatory book or anti-inflammatory book to help you reduce inflammation in your life. That's the cause of most of our health issues. And make sure you like, uh, do all the fun stuff that you should be doing on YouTube for these videos. I uh, hope you guys got a lot out of that, and we'll talk to you next time.